Hey guys, how are we doing? Uh, today's video is going to be on how to travel the United States cheaply. Um, so I'm going to talk about the ways that me and my wife have been able to travel the United States uh, cheaply, go to national parks and uh, see 30 different states and uh, see 15 different national parks or national monuments in the last year. So there's one thing you have to remember about this is um, either you have to have a lot of money um, to go do these things because money is time and time is money or you need to have time. And this year is the year that me and my wife had all the time in, in the world basically I will say to go do these things. She had accumulated quite amount of vacation time for employer and I was graduating college so there was uh, college breaks and then after graduation before I started my job I was capable of taking a few weeks off to go do some of this stuff. So my first suggestion to anybody that wants to uh, to travel the world cheaply is to make a bucket list of places that you want to visit. And the whole reason for this is so that you can plan slowly of where you want to go. Um, I've never found that planning will go uh, quickly because you're going to have to plan months in advance to get good prices and or to get into the places that you want to see. Um, Second is um, once you find out where you want to go is you need to do lots and lots of research. Um, you know, do lots of Google searches. Um, I use TripAdvisor a lot. So once I find a place that I really would like to go, I get on the TripAdvisor and really figure out if that's somewhere that, you know, needs a week to go, needs two weeks, um, or just, you know, can I do that in a day on a weekend or something. So um, getting on the TripAdvisor and figuring out how much time I need there. But then also TripAdvisor gives me ideas for hotels or campsites. And that's one of my biggest um, tools that I use. And I'll show you and explain to you more later on in this video um, about TripAdvisor and what it truly has to offer for you. My steps of, of um, traveling cheaply is first, you know, you got to figure out where you want to go. And then you got to do your research of what's there to stay at. You know, do you have family that lives close by that you can stay with? Do you have a friend that lives close by that you can stay with? Um, is there campgrounds? How expensive are the campgrounds? Is there hotels? And how expensive are the hotels? Um, for the most part, you know, every trip that we went on this year, we stayed in a, in a campground. We stayed in our tent. Um, and, you know, usually that runs us, you know, because we stay in national parks, 20 bucks a night on average. We've spent $35 on, on campgrounds and up to $75 on a campsite. But... Um, it's all because of location. So you got to figure out where you want to go and whether or not it's within the budget. Not all places are within the budget. <clears throat> so the other thing you need to think about is how long in advance do you need to book? You know, if you're looking to go to Yellowstone in the middle of summer, July, August time, you can't say, okay, June 15th, I want to go to um, Yellowstone July 15th and get a campsite. You're not, it's just not going to happen unless you drive out there and get lucky that someone either canceled us canceled or that you get one of the sites that is first come first serve. <clears throat> and then the other thing you need to think about is location of where you're camping. So we stayed in the Everglades for six days on our Florida trip and drove out of the Everglades for four of those days because it was $19 plus a discount for us to stay there. And any other campsite I found around there was $35 to $40. So for us, it was economically smart for us to spend you know, half the price of the campground and then drive out. Um, our car gets really good fuel economy, so it didn't, so we don't use a lot of money in fuel when we drive around. So we stayed in the Everglades and drove down to Key Largo one day, drove over to Miami one day, uh, drove up to Hollywood, Florida, uh, I think West Palm Beach, um, and we did all that stuff. So perfectly capable of taking a little bit of extra time and driving to save yourself some money also. Uh, the other thing we do to save money is we, generally speaking, we cook all of our food. Um, if we're going on a two-week trip, we'll try and cook for the first six days. And then after that, we try and eat cheaply or we'll go back to Walmart and resupply all of our food. But after six days of eating um, quick, easy meals, we generally speaking want to eat out a little bit. So that's where our um, prices go a little bit higher. But if you watch your food intake and go back to Walmart and replenish your cooler, uh, one or two times during a two week trip, you can easily save lots of money on your food bill that way. And then another thing you need to do is you need to figure out what you're gonna do when you're there. So 
Um, when we went to Pensacola, Florida, I really just booked the trip um, kind of sort of last minute. Didn't really have anything planned. It was just one of those things, let's go down, get out, of get out of town and go see things. But when we were there, we found a really awesome um, aeronautical museum. And we ended up spending about a full day there. We spent half a day one day and half a day the next day. And it ended up being one of the best free things that I think we've ever all right guys, like I would mentioned earlier in this video, I was going to go over some of the uh, websites and, and tools that I use to plan my vacations. Um, this here is TripAdvisor. It's my favorite website out of all of them um, because I can use it anywhere I go, national parks, cities, uh, states. It just is a wealth of information and the a lot of the information comes from the reviews that other travelers and other people put on this website so it's not just um professionals giving their opinions that are paid to give their opinions so that's one of the reasons why i love this i also love it because of its ease of use so if we go here and type in campgrounds and our find box go type in our near box for the badlands and we'll just find out how many campgrounds are in the badlands so here we can see that there's um, Cedar Pass Campground, Sage Creek Pass Ground, Campground, um, Sage Creek Wilderness Area, there's Cedar Pass Lodge, uh, you know, there's just all these campgrounds in this area. Sage Creek is the campground that I stayed at that we saved our $50 because it was free. Um, it gives you pictures, uh, reviews, uh, there's questions and answers here. So if you're not exactly sure, you can ask a question and someone will try and answer it. Um, so I just, I love this campground. I love this website for that reasoning. So the other thing we can do is we can go here and just clear out the find. And if we want to find something in an area, if we type in Pensacola Beach, Florida, and we hit the search box, it's going to bring up just everything that, and you know, Pensacola Beach has to offer. You know, it has 16 lodging, 225 vacation rentals, 59 things to do, and there's 49 restaurants. So if we're hungry, you know, you click on the restaurants, and it brings up a list of restaurants ranked um, first to last according to their um, star rating. It's out of five stars. Now, this is the one thing I will say that I don't like about TripAdvisor is that <clears throat> they rank them in their order of, you know, highest stars to lowest stars. But I think that they should also take into account how many reviews a place has. So, like... Uh, the Grand Marlin is number two. It has a four and a half star review with almost 1300 reviews. But the first place is a Dwowsy Poet and it looks like it's a coffee shop, but it only has 187 reviews. So to me, I would be looking at, you know, how many reviews does it have? Um, and that's what I'd be really going off of when I do my research. So the other website I like to use is the National Parks website for each park that we're going to. You know, I can get my maps from here to figure out where I'm going. Um, I can just get an overview of what the park has to offer. Um, you know, you got you got things to do. You got black bears and cage Cove. So it just gives you a wealth of information. <clears throat> so the other thing I use here is their list of campgrounds and camping and eating and sleeping tab. So you go to camping. Um, we're going to do front country camping. So we click on front country, and then it gives and then it just gives you a list of. Uh, the campgrounds that are there, um, the campgrounds that you can reserve, you know, how many sites are there, it gives you a map of the campground, you know, the cost of the campground, all this stuff. Um, so it gives you a list of the open and closed dates also. So I just love this website. If we go back up here to plan your visit, you know, they got all your basic information, things to do, safety, places to go, and they got, you know, trip planners and everything to help you plan your stuff. But my last thing that I use um, all the time, um, I use this all the time in regular life anyways, is Google. I always Google where I'm going to see what you know other people have done. You can find um, all different types of reviews in all different areas. It's just good to Google where you're going because if you look at TripAdvisor, you know, people could be paid on TripAdvisor or if you look just on Google, people could have been paid to put a good review on Google at the top, but you truly need to just do all your research all over the place. <clears throat> That's what I've found that works out best for me. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments on this video, please put them below. I will uh, respond to those as quickly and as soon as, soon as I can. Um, if you did like the video, please, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please like it and share it. 
um, subscribe so that you guys can see what's going on in the future. I will be making a video on my gear list that I have currently that what I'm taking. Um, this gear has changed dramatically over the last year based on my trips. It also changes based on where I'm going and how long I'm going also. So once again, please subscribe and thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.